So far, we have established that when a charge accelerates, the region uh, corresponding to its acceleration propagates out with speed c and it has an electric field that is has a tangential component or a component which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of that region. In this lecture, we are going to show that this field indeed has a 1 over r dependence and ca carries out power that is 1 over r square and that, that means this is indeed radiation field. So, let me make a neater picture now concentrating only on one line of force. So, here is my inner circle, here is my outer circle, here is my charge later, here is my charge initially, this is the field line initially, this is the field line later and I will connect them. And this charge was moving this way, charge Q and this has developed a radial component and there is of course, a component which is tangential component and a radial component. This is E, let us call it tangential and the other of course, is E radial. Let this angle where I am observing the field and the direction of acceleration be theta. Let me again connect the lines, this other line is like this. I have E and this distance is C tau and I need this distance also. So, let us see now, I have E tangential or E radial divided by E tangential is equal to tangent of alpha, where alpha is this angle. E radial divided by E tangential is tangent of alpha. This tangent of alpha is also the same as the distance C tau divided by the distance here, which I am showing by red right next to E t, which is the same distance as this. Let us call it d, C tau over d. Now, I will calculate d. Let me take this picture to the bottom and show that this is d. This angle is theta. This distance is v t, the lower distance. If this is theta, this is also theta. So, I have d over v t equals sin of theta, which implies that d is equal to v t sin theta. Substituting this here, I get E radial divided by E tangential is equal to C tau over v t sin theta, which gives me E tangential is equal to E radial v t sin theta divided by C tau. So, now we have gotten a working formula with which we will now start working. So, we have got E tangential equals E r v t sin theta over C tau, where again I make this picture inner circle, outer circle, the field line is pretty much like this is E tangential, this is E radial. Now, V over tau is the acceleration and therefore, I can write this formula as E r acceleration times t sin theta over c. By Gauss's law, I have E r times 4 pi r square, r is nothing but c square t square. So, I can cut this and write this as c square t square is equal to total charge q divided by epsilon 0. And therefore, E radial is q over 4 pi epsilon 0 c square t square. And this immediately gives me E tangential is equal to q 
q a t sin theta divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 c square t square times c. Again, I am going to cancel one of the t's and write c t as r again, because r is the distance up to which this tangential component of electric field has moved and I can write this as q a sin theta divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 c square r. Notice we accomplished what we were looking for. We have found that the tangential electric field is proportional to 1 over r, how far this tangential component has moved and the rest of the constants. So, what we have gotten in this case is that E tangential is equal to Q A sin theta over 4 pi epsilon 0 C cubed R. So, if I look at this charge which was given an acceleration in this direction, it develops a tangential field which is 0 here, sin theta is maximum here at pi by 2, it is very large here opposite in the direction to the acceleration, smaller here, even a smaller here, even a smaller here and becomes 0 at theta equals 0. The other way on the other side, very large and then diminishes again. zero. Now, how about the pointing vector or B tangential? B tangential I have already seen as E tangential over C and therefore, it is going to be Q A sin theta over this is C square 4 pi epsilon 0 C cubed R the pointing vector s which is going to be radially out is going to be equal to 1 half epsilon 0 e square times c which is same as 1 over mu 0 e cross b. So, this is equal to 1 half epsilon 0 c times e square which is q square a square sin square theta divided by 16 pi epsilon 0 square c raised to 4 r square. So, the pointing vector this is magnitude and direction is radially outward is I will cancel one of the epsilon zeros, I will cancel one of the c's it becomes c cubed. So, this is equal to this half is also not there right now, because I have not taken the average half you remember arose because of the harmonic nature. So, this half is not there is equal to q square a square over 16 pi epsilon 0 c cubed sin square theta over r square. So, you see the power radiatus also goes as 1 over r square which is very satisfying because that is how power from a point source goes. Let us see now what happens if I take this point charge and start moving it back and forth q which is making a oscillating motion harmonic oscillating motion. So, we already seen that s is equal to q square a square over 16 pi epsilon 0 c cubed sin square theta over r square. In this case a is equal to x double dot where x is nothing but some amplitude sin omega t double dot. So, which is going to be minus omega square a sin square omega t and therefore, the power radiated by an oscillating charge would be equal to q square omega raise to 4 a square this is sin omega t not sin square omega t over 16 pi epsilon 0 c cubed sin square omega t sin square theta 
over r square. The average power by average power we mean we average it over a cycle so that we only observe that the frequency is very large. It will give me a factor of half because of this. This was a mistake I was making earlier when I wrote that factor of half. So, this will give me q square omega raise to 4 a square over 32 pi epsilon 0 c cubed sin square theta over r square. This is the average power that is given out by this oscillating charge. Oscillating charge since this moves away from the center also makes a dipole which is equal to q x. So, I can even think of this as an oscillating dipole which is giving out radiation. Radiation is maximum in the direction perpendicular to the dipole and it is 0 in the direction of the dipole. How about the total power radiated? The total power radiated, so this s is q square omega raise to 4 a square over 32 pi epsilon 0 c cubed sin square theta over r square which is nothing but power per unit area. So, total power is going to be equal to q square omega raise to 4 a square over 32 pi epsilon 0 c cubed sin square theta over r square times d cosine theta d phi times r square. Remember, this is the area in direction r. Now, r square cancels. There is no phi dependence, so that 2 pi will come out. So, this is integrated over. This becomes q square omega raise to 4 a square over 32 pi epsilon 0 c cubed times 2 pi integration sin square theta I can write as 1 minus cosine square theta d cosine theta going from minus 1 to 1. 2 pi with 32 pi gives me 16. So, this is going to be q square omega raise to 4 a square over 16 epsilon 0 c cubed times 1 minus cosine square theta d cos theta gives me 4 thirds. So, this is equal to q square omega raise to 4 a square over 12 epsilon 0 c cubed. Yes, I am missing a factor of pi. If you go back to this formula, this was pi square here and therefore, I have pi square here and pi square here, pi square here. So, finally, pi square here and therefore, finally, I have a 12 pi here. This is the total power radiated by a charge oscillating back and forth or a dipole of dipole moment p equals q a. If it is oscillating back and forth, it will have a time dependence sin omega t that this dipole gives out. This is known as Larmor formula for radiation. So, what I have shown in this lecture is very qualitatively drawing field lines and things like those that an accelerating charge develops a field which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation it goes as 1 over r and therefore, is the radiation field. Now, imagine what will happen when the this charge is moving back and forth it is moving back and forth and therefore, sometimes the field will be in one direction sometimes in the other direction and as the wave propagates the field goes up and down like this and this is the harmonic wave going out.